Hey and welcome, here with a quick tutorial on utilizing GitLab, this can also work for GitHub or any Git uh, type website to create a new repo, clone it and use it with Unity. So we're going to start off by just go and create a new project. Like I said, this works with GitHub, um, Bitbuckets, whatever other repo hosting services they are. Uh, I prefer to use GitLab just because of the features, the feature set. So we're going to start off by just creating a new project. We're going to create a blank project, give it a name, code name, GitLab test, and doesn't need anything else here. This is going to be private repo and create. Once that is created, we need to add the .git ignore file. So there's usually a new file button or a plus somewhere, click that to create a brand new file on the repo. We're going to go new file over here. Uh, GitLab already has a .git ignore option there and also a Unity template. So adding these git ignores for Unity is very important. And uh, what this does is it ignores certain folders that are unnecessary that do get created um, by Unity over and over again, like the library folders, temp folders, etc. Uh, what we're also going to add here, as of Unity 2020.3 and up, we do need to add another one over here called logs. Otherwise, we're going to get a lot of log files added to our repo as well. Um, that is about it. If you are going to be creating Unity packages and keeping them inside of your repo, then you should probably remove this. And I usually do remove that one from the git ignore. Otherwise, that is it for the git ignore there. We can go and commit that to our repo over here, commit it to the main branch, make sure it does say main there. And if we go back to the repo now by clicking on this button over here, once it loads, we can now see we have the only file over here, git ignore. Now there is a problem. If you do go and clone the repo without any files in here, you are gonna get some bad time errors uh, with GitHub desktop, which is what we're gonna do next. So make sure you've got the git ignore set up and now we can go over to github desktop. So with github desktop, we go file clone repo and note that github desktop doesn't have to use github.com. It can use other repo services like GitLab and Bitbucket. Uh, github.com will just be integrated a little bit more tightly in here. Otherwise, you can just go over to the URL, paste the new URL. So notice that I did go and copy the URL over here. You can also just right click, say copy link address, but essentially it's this link at the top here. Uh, you can also use the clone button and grab the URL over there. Otherwise, the standard URL, the top of your search bar is totally fine. Now we go back to GitHub desktop, copy it, paste it in there, save it somewhere. Um, you can put it wherever you like. Uh, just choose a folder somewhere and clone it. Now that's going to take a second to quickly clone it. And if we go under history, we can actually see there we've added that git ignore file. And GitHub desktop does this really nice thing where it shows you what's changed. So over here, we've added a whole bunch of things, which is correct. Now, when we're working with Unity, um, if you already have an existing project, the easiest way to import that is to go to repository show in Explorer. That will open up the Git folder over here and we can just drag and drop the Unity project in here. Now I highly recommend keeping your Unity project separate, so in a subfolder rather than just loose um, in the Git repo over here. That'll just save you a lot of headaches um, and allow you to add other files like any sort of builds or Unity packages or artwork, that sort of stuff in the root of the folder. So I've created a brand new Unity project over here. Um, I created it before uh, cloning the project, so I'm going to go and move this over into the repo. So I'm going to just right click in project here, show in Explorer, here's my project. So I'm going to go and close Unity because I'm going to be moving the entire project over. Here's my Git folder and here's my project folder. So I'm going to just go and move that in here. And now if we go back to GitHub desktop here, go to changes, we can see a list of all the changes. 
Now, if you haven't set up your get ignore properly, you're going to see something over 4,000 changes over here. So make sure that um, these changes are exactly what you've done in the project. And you'll notice if you just go and look through them, there's the sample scene, all the project settings files over here. Uh, this all looks ready to go. So once we've made some changes, we've got the project set up. Now we want to go and commit that. So you need to add in a little summary over here. Um, to just say what you did. So I'm just going to call this base upload. Try and keep these uh, summaries quite descriptive because um, they do come back to bite you if you do not. Okay, so now that's committed it. What we do when it commits, it signs it off, it rounds off the whole package of changes and it adds it to the history. Now in order for it to actually be up on the repo on the server, we do have to push it from our local computer up to the server. So we're going to go push that to the origin branch. Right, so now we've made some changes, we've pushed it up. Anyone else who has the, the Git repo can go and pull those changes and see exactly the same thing that you're seeing, right? So let's go and open up that Unity project once more, make some quick changes. And I just need to add where that one went to. There it is. And now let's go and make some quick changes. So we add a little cube over there. We've made a scene change, right? And maybe let's go and create a new folder and add a basic script over here. So we've made those changes, right? And we come back to GitHub desktop over here. We've made some changes. We're happy with what we've done with the project. We can go and commit and push that now. So we commit that and we can push it. Now, one thing to note with Unity, if you go and create a material and let's go, let's actually just leave the material over there. Okay, so the material does show up. Sometimes what happens is um, you create something new in the project and it doesn't get serialized to, it doesn't get saved to disk at that exact point in, um, in the project. So just try and form a habit of going file save project and that will then go and make sure everything is written to disk. So anything that was just saved in memory will then be written out to disk and GitHub desktop will see those changes and you'll be able to push them. Um, otherwise what you can do is if it is the end of your work session, close everything down first, then go and commit and push your changes up. Say we don't want this material anymore, we can go and discard that change. If you do accidentally discard changes, you can always find them in your recycle bin. So that's nice and handy. Um, also, if you go and accidentally just delete this uh, script out of my project over here and suddenly realize actually that was the wrong script, I still need that. You can see over here, it's gone and removed the script because from the previous commit, that script existed and now it's saying the script doesn't exist anymore. So to get the script back, we can just go and discard all those changes or we can discard the individual change over here and bing, bada boom, our script is back. Nice and safe and easy to use. So the power of using Git is that there are multiple ways to retrieve data that has been lost um, and restore data that has been changed over time. You can always go back to these history um, commits over here and go and look for a specific file you can also do this on the web portal as well. Go back to a particular commit, a particular uh, time in or place in history and download a file from that exact point in time. So if you've made changes to a script over a few work sessions and realize, you know what, the previous version was much nicer, you can always go back and retrieve that. So now when you're working with multiple branches, uh, you can go and create a new branch over here and say, obviously descriptive name again, um, my branch. Now you are on your version, your branch, which has a copy of where you were on the main branch. So everything exists here, right? Now we're going to make some changes. Maybe we're introducing a new feature um, to the game over here. Let's go with new feature. We have now made our new features and we say new feature implemented and we commit that okay now we need to publish the branch because this is the first commit for this particular branch over here 
And if we go to the history, we can see we've got new feature implemented. Now, if we wanted to put that back into the main branch, we can go over to the main branch over here and you can see the history doesn't have that particular commit, right? We want to now bring all that we've been working on on the other branch into the main branch. So in the main branch, we can go to a branch and say merge into current branch, select the branch that we were working on over here. And it says we've got one commit ready to go. So create a commit merge over here, a merge commit. And we can push that. So on the main branch under history, we now see we have the new feature implemented in the main branch. Um, if you are wanting to simply see what someone else is working on, you can also just go over to their particular branch in GitHub desktop here, switch back to Unity and Unity will reload all the um, all the project files and you'll now be seeing their version of the Unity project. So you can also do that. Um, just be cautious that you don't go and overwrite things that you shouldn't be overwriting when working with different branches. Otherwise you are going to have some merge issues. And when it does come to merge issues, the more you merge, the less issues you're going to have. So just keep it frequent. Make sure that uh, you are only working on files that you know you should be working on that your structure, your folder structure is set up initially, that you're not going and changing project structure, moving files around um, on a different branch while someone else is working on something different there. And that is about it for this short demonstration. Cheers.